Hey guys, today I am installing a Kohler, let's see, I think it's a Rubicon. Kohler Rubicon, so the number under it is R76217-4G-BN. So I'm just installing the shower trim kit. This has been <laughs> an endeavor for me. So um, I'm pretty lucky. I have a really awesome Home Depot and they got a hold of me. A contractor had ordered a bunch of these kits for these showers and for the faucets and they returned them and they got a hold of me and they were changing over the inventory and they're like, hey, if you buy all of these, we'll give them to you for a package deal, but you have to buy them all. So I got a bunch of these like a year and a half ago and they've all been great except for this last shower kit has a bunch of missing parts in it. So I think the contractor took out what they needed and um, then returned it to the store, unfortunately. So if you're that person, don't be that person because I think people think, oh, it's this big box store it's not going to hurt them. Well, it doesn't hurt them. It hurts the person that buys your product that you use part of and you returned it. So don't be a dick. Anyway, that's my soapbox. So that piece of it, um, we have, I ordered the parts that I was missing. So I was missing, I don't even know what these are all called, but this little adapter piece. And then I was also, and these were hard to get. Then I was missing, not this whole kit. I had this piece, but somebody had stolen and I'm saying stolen because it was stolen when you return something half used they had taken this piece and they had taken this piece so I had to buy a couple different components to put it back together so um also these have the worst instructions ever so I thought it would be worth making a video of how this goes together so if you are putting one of these together you just have a little bit of help because they suck um instruction wise so this is the valve it's been installed I have the the black piece screwed in and then what you're gonna do is you're going to take your little screw on piece like this and you're going to screw it in until you're up and down so um you might not like tight might not be up and down but you want it to be up and down because when you go and you install this piece these two bolts have to go into the bolt holes vertical. So you want it to be up and down. Once you have it in where you want it, you're going to take that little clip and I'll show you on my extra one. See that hole on the side? You're gonna push it in there, just kind of a placeholder on here. So I have this vertical and I'm gonna put that little guy in there. Okay, now if we're gonna put our stem adapter piece on. So this was this is gonna slide onto this gold piece here. It's gonna fit right around it. Now this orange guy right here, that's for if you wanna adjust your temperature because these have a skull guard on them. I think it's actually required now, I'm pretty sure, for faucet systems. So you can adjust. I installed a shower once when I didn't know about these, like the first one I ever did myself, and it was so cold and we couldn't get it as hot as we wanted. Well, we had to take it apart and adjust the maximum temperature on this. So you should have instructions if somebody didn't take them out of your box. You should have instructions for that if you want to adjust the temperature. That's what this orange guy is in there for. So if that's what you want to do, find a different video. That's not what we're doing here. I've already done it. So I'm going to slide that on that center metal piece. Now, this other piece that I had to buy, it has two sides. It will fit on that way. See how it's deeper to that wall in there? Or it will fit on that way. It's shorter. So your instructions, mine are gone. I just remember this from when I bought one before. Your instructions will tell you, depending on the distance from the finished wall to here, you're either gonna slide it on that way or you're gonna slide it on this way, like to stick it out further because that piece is going to slide inside that square, inside your handle. And obviously if it sticks out too far, it's not gonna slide back all the way. If it sticks out not far enough, then it's not gonna grab. So I um, don't have my instructions, don't know what those measurements are. So I'm gonna try it the way that the female end of this receives more of this adapter because visually I just don't think it needs to stick out farther than that. You want your square to be as close to perpendicular as possible, but you, you always close your drain before you do this in case you drop anything. So, but you might not get it exactly perpendicular. So just as close to it as you can with your faucet being in the off position. So then you're gonna take the set screw 
that came with your kit. If it's still there, I had to order one. And you are going to screw that bolt into place. Um, I'm gonna use a drill. If you don't have confidence in your drilling skills to be able to not over drill it and crank it and break it or strip it, just do it by hand with a screwdriver. But um, I'm just gonna go really slow. So I'll get it most of the way. And then I'm gonna hand tighten it the rest of the way um, with my screwdriver. But you do have to be careful. My husband tends to over tighten things and certain things can strip and break. So just be cautious. Like you want it tight, but you don't wanna hulk it out and break it. So. Now, again, I don't know if I have this on correct until I put this adapter piece on here. I think, I think that's the length I want. But if I, if I need to be out further, this piece flips. Keep that in mind, that little square metal piece. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. It has a gasket. So um, with the gasket, you shouldn't have to put silicone caulk around it. I'm still going to. I'd rather be careful um and and all silicone around the outside edge but the gasket sh should prevent the need for that so you're gonna line your bolts up with those bolt holes you're gonna slide it over and then you're gonna tighten that so your hole the opening right there that goes down so same thing i'm gonna tighten it with a drill most of the way and then I'll probably hand tighten it the rest of the way. Okay. So, yeah, those can be tightened more, but, and then you can actually see through that hole to the bottom one to make sure it's in there. And I probably have a little bit of flexion because this is a tub surround that doesn't have, they have two types of surround. They have one that goes onto the studs and they have some that you have the drywall and then you glue it to the studs uh, or glue it to the drywall. This is just, this is, there's some studs here and then you have this pretty thick surround piece. So this might move, you know, in my case more than it would for you if you had a solid tile wall application. So I'm just getting these snug. But hand tight, I'm not, I'm not cranking it hard. Like this isn't a struggle. Once it becomes a struggle, I'm gonna assume I'm tight enough and I'm gonna stop. And you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna look at this from the side up here and see if it's pulling my piece in too much. Because if it is, we obviously don't want to create like a bow in the wall. Okay, so I think I'm nice and snug. I'm gonna stop there. So now, what you're going to do is you are going to take your finished piece and it has marks on it. So it has the logo at the top. You can't see it because the light very well. It says Kohler and then hot and cold. So make sure you obviously have that the right direction that you want to have it. And then this piece, I'm just going to show you from the side, this holds down while this turns. So in the picture, and I'm sure your instructions will say this, I think it start like on the other ones of these I have, it starts off down and then it turns to open and close. So we are going to slide. This has been sitting down here because I had to wait for parts. We're going to slide that on and hold this piece down. And then we're going to turn this to tighten it. And then that's going to hold this in place. So I'm going to kind of just let this go. And as I get to the point where I want to snug it, then I'm going to align this and make sure it's how I want it. Cause this is what's holding that on when you screw onto those little black screw threads on there. So I'm going to line up and if I can't reach, then I know I need to switch that adapter piece around. So for me, just to look at it from the top is going to let me be a little bit more realistic. Okay, so I'm good. I have that on at a good angle, actually. And so I'm going to start going righty tidy. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about this piece too much until I feel like I'm getting snug and then I'll make sure that back plate is kind of exactly how I want it. But 
don't let this get too out of alignment because once it starts getting snug, if you have like a vinyl enclosure like I have, or even a tile that could be easily scratched, like maybe a marble or a travertine, if you crank this over, the back of this could scratch your stone. So keep that in mind, depending on what your back surface is, that you don't want to be sliding and scraping that too much. So again, I'm just holding this in place in the off position and I'm tightening, I'm hand tightening this. I feel like it's pretty snug. I have it lined up. Like I said, you should not have to caulk this because you have that um, kind of foam gasket in there. I'm still going to caulk it, especially because most of my properties are rental properties or short-term rentals. In this case, it is a short-term rental. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm just over overly cautious, right? So I'm going to take silicone caulk when I come and do my kind of checklist on this house and finish everything up. I'm going to do silicone caulk all the way around this except for the bottom. There's a little weep hole down here. It's hard to see, but if you look underneath, you can see it. And what that's meant to do is if any water gets behind here, then it can drip out because you don't want it to get trapped back there and go back into your wall. So always when you're siliconing around something like this or like this in your shower, leave a little opening right here where the weep hole is so it can drip if it needs to. So again, these are actually really easy to install. The instructions make them look like they're a nightmare. Um, so that's how you do it. Um, Rubicon, uh, Kohler Rubicon um, trim kit, super, super easy. If you have their valve and adapter, you should be able to switch this out for any Kohler um, I'm pretty sure trim kit. Um, so again, hopefully that was helpful. These are not a bad shower. Um, I've seen people leave bad reviews on them. Again, I haven't had a bad experience with them. I think the instructions are just really, really bad. So um, there we go. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you guys have an awesome day. See ya.